region uh, of uh, Mount Emirus. Uh, this was after an avalanche when the incident had occurred between the camp of the first camp and the base camp of Mount Everest, uh, where the Sherpas were carrying uh, expedition logistics. And uh, although the rescue operations are underway, but it is being said that there are very slim chances that they can uh, be rescued because uh, uh, they uh, are believed to be buried uh, nearly under five to six uh, meters of snow uh, after that avalanche. A team of about uh, 25 high altitude guides who were climbing above the Khumbu ice fall. Uh, when the massive uh, ice sheet just fell over and uh, they tumbled to about 50 meters down that mountain. This was below Camp 1, uh, that is 5,700 meters, uh, where the three Sherpas were buried after this incident happened. Now, this was, of course, uh, 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 reported by uh, uh, the local uh, papers in Kathmandu uh, also putting out details of how uh, the search mission that still continues but uh, very slim chances that uh, they can be uh, uh, rescued after this avalanche and uh, this is one of the most dangerous sections like I had mentioned uh, of the Mount Everest and uh, uh, according to the report Bigyan Koirala who is an official of the tourism department had said that uh, there are choppers that are doing multiple rounds of the areas. Uh, there are record detector uh, that has uh, also been installed right. to get a sense of the avalanche trans receiver uh, to search and locate people who are buried under the snow. But uh, really at this point, uh, as they're still uh, hunting for those three Sherpas, uh, uh, they're also trying to get details uh, because this was a 7.8 magnitude earthquake that caused that avalanche when they were uh, uphill, they were trekking uh, towards the first camp and uh, it was then that uh, the, this accident, this avalanche occurred and now they are believed to be... Right. We'll get you more updates on that search viewers. In Karnataka, the battle has heated up. There are four bigwigs who will file their nominations today. Chief Minister Basavraj Bomai will file his nomination from the Shigao constituency in Haveri district and the BJP national president JP Nadda as well as popular actor Kicha Sudeep will accompany him there. That is what we are witnessing. We also have B.Y. Vijendra, the son of Yadurappa, who will file his nomination from the Shikharipura constituency. His father will accompany him. Jagdi Shetar will file his nomination as a Congress candidate from the Hubali Dharwad Central constituency in the presence of local Congress leaders there after his recent switch. And also another senior Congress leader, former Chief Minister Siddharamaya will file his nomination from the Varuna Assembly constituency. The visuals that we are beaming to you right now are from Shigao where Basavraj Bommai, Kicha Sudeep and JP Nadda are present and also present is Prajwal. Prajwal, uh, what are you witnessing right now? What is the kind of turnout we've seen and what is the fanfare we've seen? Prajwal, over to you. Uh, you know, Ankit, uh, right now uh, the roadshow has uh, ended here and it has uh, come to the last stage where a stage program will be held here at a uh, public ground uh, in uh, Shigao. And uh, we have moved to the bylanes of uh, the Shigao Assembly constituency here, where initially the roadshow was expected to end within one kilometer, but uh, we traveled for over three to three and a half kilometer. And uh, finally, the roadshow has come here and uh, there is a massive stage program uh, which will be starting uh, soon in the next uh, four to five minutes is what we get to understand where uh, all the three popular personalities, uh, which is Chief Minister Basfaraj Bomai, the BJP National President JP Nadda and uh, Kicha Sudeep will also be addressing them and uh, the turnout of only for the roadshow from what we get to understand was anywhere between 15,000 to 20,000 and now it has increased to over 50,000 to 70,000 right in front of us uh, because this is uh, the massive stage show that uh, we are uh, speaking about uh, in uh, Shigao Assembly constituency as well. And uh, the people are thrilled and overjoyed, uh, more so because of the fact uh, that uh, Sudeep uh, has uh, personally come here to go on and campaign for him. And uh, this will 
this will be the beginning of Sudeep's campaign, but we understand that he will go ahead and uh, conduct uh, another uh, 20 to 25 uh, rallies uh, for the BJP party or for the candidates uh, who Chief Minister Basraj Bomai states here. Look, this is this is one section of the crowd here, Ankit. But on the right side, I also want to go ahead and uh, show the pavilion here. You can look at the pavilion here too. Hundreds and hundreds of people queuing up on the pavilion as well to go ahead and just get a glimpse of Chief Minister Basraj Bomai and uh, hear him uh, speak as well. So this entire ground is uh, completely packed. It is completely packed here. More and more number of people uh, coming in here and this exactly shows uh, as to why Chief Minister Basraj Bomai is uh, quite a popular face uh, in his uh, assembly constituency as well. And uh, remember that uh, this will be his first official campaign as the, the Chief Minister of uh, Karnataka in his own assembly constituency because he had not come here to campaign for himself in the past because he was busy going on <coughs> campaigning uh, for uh, you know he was he was busy going ahead and uh, campaigning uh, for other candidates too so this is uh, this is the official show of strength uh, by the bjp party right here and uh, even as we are going on and approaching uh, the stage over here you are uh, going on and getting these uh, visuals of uh, chief minister uh, baswaraj bomai being uh, garlanded by his uh, supporters uh, as well and uh, this is uh, just a witness uh, for you right there on the screen as well and uh, you can look at uh, J.P. Nadda, Kicha Sudeep, Govind Karchol and uh, all these dignitaries who are uh, present uh, on the stage as well. Yes, uh, our audio might be a bit jarring, uh, but uh, you see that uh, more and more number of uh, people are coming in. We're seeing all the ministers. We're seeing Mr. P.C. Patil. We're seeing Mr. Murugesh Nirani. Uh, we're also seeing Mr. Govind Karchol uh, and uh, Chief Minister Basraj Bomai, J.P. Nadda and uh, Kicha Sudeep uh, at uh, the center of the stage. Uh, and this uh, is uh, seemingly the highlight of today where uh, thousands and thousands of people have uh, gathered here at uh, this uh, gathering uh, even as uh, we are uh, right in front of the stage uh, bringing you these uh, visuals uh, from uh, the Shiga uh, Assembly constituency too and uh, now uh, we are expecting uh, that uh, the speech uh, will be started off uh, by Chief Minister Basraj Bomai which will be followed by Sudeep going ahead delivering his uh, speech uh, and uh, also finally uh, JP Nadda, the BJP National President will also be going ahead and uh, addressing the crowd too and uh, there are also a host of issues uh, from the Shigao assembly constituency too which had bothered the people for a very long time mainly it's about uh, the connectivity was one of the major problems but because of the development of the expressway in the Hubli Darwad region as well this has turned out to be a huge boost for the people in connecting uh, to tier 1 and tier 2 cities as well and apart from which we are also speaking about the Janjivan mission too and uh, there are lacks of beneficiaries of the mission uh, of the Janjivan mission, not only in Shigao Assembly constituency, but also across the entire district of Haveri as well, because we also need to go ahead and learn the fact that both Yadgir as well as Haveri are some of the biggest districts in the state of Karnataka, and uh, the considerable chunk of uh, seats uh, uh, has uh, the BJP sitting MLAs as well. So this is quite crucial for them to go ahead and make sure that they not only retain the seats, but also make sure that they win the other remaining seats too, which could turn out to be quite crucial for them ahead of uh, the Assembly elections too. So we are seeing that uh, as of uh, now uh, the Nada Gite, that is the state anthem is being uh, played uh, where all the dignitaries uh, are uh, going ahead uh, and uh, you know standing there as a mark of respect. Ankit, over to you in the studios. Right. Rajwal bringing us up to date with exactly what's going on in Shigao as the leaders there begin the event where there is a lot of fanfare, a lot of people are waiting to hear from the Chief Minister of the State who has been the MLA for the constituency since the year 2008. This time he has the advantage of going into the election battle as the incumbent Chief Minister and clearly no effort is being spared in making his path to victory as sure as possible, the BJP national president there, uh -huh, uh -huh. star yeah, power yeah. also being added in the form of Kicha Sudeep, who has entered this campaign in his own words, only for Basavaraj Bomai. They have a special connect is uh, what he has said. He has maintained that for a long time and the BJP is likely to benefit significantly as a result of that. We also have parallel road shows of the Congress that are ongoing, for instance, in Varuna. But uh, for the moment, it is Shigao and Basavraj Bomai on whom 
most eyes are on. Let's listen in now to Basavraj Bomai who has started speaking. Now, Chief Minister Basaraj Bombay has uh, arrived uh, out here on the stage and uh, he is uh, thanking the people to have uh, come and uh, record uh, numbers uh, as well. And uh, he is uh, clearly going ahead and uh, stating and thanking the people for turning out in such uh, large numbers. <laughs> Now, Chief Minister Basraj Boma is stating uh, that uh, now uh, uh, JP Nadda has uh, come in here, uh, who is uh, a popular leader uh, in uh, Karnataka, and uh, he is uh, being uh, welcomed uh, by the common karyakartas and uh, the party cadres uh, as well. Now, Chief Minister Basraj Boma is also welcoming uh, senior ministers uh, Govind uh, Karjol, Murgesh Mirani, DC Patil too. Now you can hear this, uh, you know, you can hear this uh, out here, uh, Ankit, uh, where uh, Sudeep uh, is uh, finally, you know, he's finally got from his seat and raising his hands and, uh, uh, you know, just waving to the people stating that he is here with Chief Minister Basraj Bomai and uh, the Chief Minister is going ahead and uh, thanking him. So Chief Minister Basraj Bomai states uh, that he will speak less and... Uh, now Chief Minister Basraj Bomai is stating uh, that uh, he will be speaking uh, very less and he will let uh, Mr. J.P. Nadda and uh, Sudeep do all the talking. You have blessed me for the past uh, 15 years and three consecutive terms. Our relationship is a biggest part of God's grace. And uh, nobody can uh, separate, uh, separate you, that is the people, from me. I bow down with respect for your love. I have lost before your love. I express, I express uh, gratitude. I express gratitude uh, for the confidence uh, and the love that you have showered upon me. It was a dream to bring the BJP into power in 2008 and it was also a dream uh, by the BJP party to ensure uh, the victory and uh, you finally gave uh, uh, a verdict in my favour where I emerged victorious in 2008. There was absolutely no sort of uh, support uh, for the people before 2008, uh, but uh, finally there was somebody to hear to your pleas uh, as well. And uh, we have uh, finally come in to answer your problems, to go ahead and give solutions as well. He is also speaking about uh, the developments uh, that has been uh, that, that has taken place uh, under his uh, regime as well. And uh, since he became uh, the MLA of uh, the constituency since uh, 2008, uh, and uh, the progress uh, that uh, the state of Karnataka, uh, the, sta uh, the the constituency of Shigav has seen from 2008, 2013, and 2018. In 15 years, we have gone ahead and built over 10,000 houses uh, for the deprived. Now, we have also set a record by building uh, 12,000 houses. So, that's quite an aggressive speech out there by Chief Minister Basraj Bhumai.
He's saying that uh, people might have been born poor, but uh, we will not let them uh, die poor. We'll make sure that at least basic facilities uh, like uh, housing is also provided to them. In Shiggav alone, we have built over 6,000 houses for the poor as well. We have also made sure that uh, drinking water uh, has uh, reached uh, each and every household uh, in Shigav Assembly constituency as well as across the entire district. In the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Amit Shah and J.P. Nadda, the Jal Jeevan mission has uh, reached out uh, to all the people uh, and they have made sure that the maximum beneficiaries are there in the state of Karnataka. Now, uh, uh, you know, Chief Minister Basraj Bhumai making a big statement there. The BJP will one twenty. The BJP will win 125 seats. The BJP will form the government with absolute majority, and there should be no doubt at all. We will win 125 seats in the upcoming assembly elections in the state of Karnataka. In the upcoming days, uh, I will uh, speak uh, about uh, all the developmental works uh, which has also taken place. But uh, but I want to go ahead and assure you. There, there were rumors uh, that uh, the chief minister will go ahead and um, change his assembly constituency. But I am not a chief minister who will run away. I am not a chief minister who will contest uh, in one election from one constituency and run away to the other constituency. I am a chief minister who will remain loyal to the people, remain loyal to my voters and you are my owners. You the people and voters of Shigao are my owners. Your decision will be final. I am your son and uh, I have uh, served uh, Karnataka. I have served Karnataka honestly. I have served Karnataka as well as Shigav Assembly Constituency. He's speaking about uh, the sort of uh, boost which the state government provided in the form of uh, health care as well. And uh, he's speaking about uh, the hospitals which was uh, constructed under his government in Shigao and Sabha. He also stated that uh, the people demanded that Bankapur should be a taluk. But he stated that uh, in, in the coming days he will make sure that even that is done because of the moral code of conduct. There has been a delay in making Bankapur as a taluk. But in the coming days it will also be done uh, after the BJP gets a majority and goes ahead and forms the government. You people are my saviour. Chief Minister Basraj Bhumai making quite an emotional statement out there uh, saying that uh, even if I die, I request uh, that I should be buried in Chigao. Quite an emotional statement, an important statement and him uh, getting emotional almost on the verge of tears as well uh, right there on our screens too and uh, he was almost on the verge of uh, tears there stating that no matter what, uh, you know, from Shigao assembly, even, even if, uh, you know, even if he dies or passes away, he should be buried in Shigao. This will be his last wish. So this is the, the sort of uh, connector.
entire South India as well as uh, the nation as well. Sudeep asking the people as to how they are. He's questioning them about their well-being and also going ahead and uh, thanking the dignitaries uh, on the stage for inviting him and making him a part of this uh, historical uh, gathering and uh, convention as well. He stated that he's come several times and every time uh, the people exceed his expectations and uh, they welcome him in a massive way. And every time it only gets bigger. He's uh, stating uh, that uh, he's uh, very happy that uh, he's uh, campaigning uh, from the land of uh, Santa Shishunada. Also speaking about uh, the political uh, journey of uh, Chief Minister Basraj Bomai as well, and uh, he's stating that he's uh, never seen uh, a simple person than Basraj Bomai. Again, lovingly calling him Bomai Mama, calling him Bomai Uncle. So he's saying uh, that uh, Bomai is just not a namesake, but uh, he is for the sake of work. So now uh, he's uh, going on and uh, stating uh, that uh, he's worked a lot for the people of the assembly constituency in Chicago. He's saying that uh, Chief Minister Basraj Bomai needs a chance uh, to work uh, for the people and therefore the people should vote for him. He's saying uh, the first and foremost and the important thing that has to be done here is the fact that the people should benefit if any leader is elected and uh, Basraj Bomai would be the right leader. Now there are chants of uh, Kitcha being uh, heard there and he's asking them to remain silent until he goes on and uh, finishes his uh, speech as well. Again, uh, he's uh, going ahead and uh, speaking uh, that uh, when Indians go abroad, they speak very highly of Indians. He's also saying because of the support of the people, work can go very well and very smoothly and administration and the people should go hand in hand. Now he's, uh, he's quoting a popular line uh, from a song. He's saying uh, we should win one day and uh, good will always triumph, good will always win. It was, it was quite a short speech and he's saying with uh, all your cooperation, uh, uh, ensure uh, the victory of uh, Chief Minister Basraj Bhamai. Now, uh, the BJP National President uh, JP Nadda is being invited on the dais to go ahead and deliver his uh, speech. Uh, and uh, he will uh, presumably speaking in uh, Hindi now uh, for uh, the benefit of our viewers. Over to you in the studio, Sankit. आज के इस नामांकन कार्यक्रम में मंच पर उपस्थित
हमारे वरिष्ठ साथी श्री बसवराज बम्बई जी हमारे मंडल के यहाँ के अध्यक्ष श्री शिवानंद जी हमारे आज के विशेष मेहमान और फिल्म जगत के जानी मानी हस्ती श्री के सुधीर जी हमारे कर्नाटक सरकार में मंत्री गोविंद करजोल जी बी पाटिल जी मुर्गेश मिरानी जी गंगाधर जी हमारे मंडल के अध्यक्ष और यहां जोश के साथ भरे हुए इतनी बड़ी संख्या में आए हुए देवी और सज्जनों और मेरे प्यारे नौजवान साथियों और मीडिया के मेरे साथी प्रिंट मीडिया इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया के मेरे साथ अभी से कुछ देर बाद बोमई साहब विधानसभा के लिए अपना नामांकन भरने जा रहे हैं यह नामांकन पत्र मात्र एमएलए का नहीं है यह कर्नाटक को देने वाली दिशा को आगे बढ़ाने का एक रास्ता है जिसको हमको समझ में आता है और इसीलिए मैं सुन रहा था गोवई साहब
All right, so there you see uh, J.P. Nadda and uh, Bomai uh, speaking as they campaign for the BJP. Remember, uh, the star campaigner list uh, for the BJP has been released, released, which has 40 names, including the likes of uh, Kitcha Sudeep and uh, the top BJP brass.
And uh, we slip into a very short break. Coming up uh, on the other side, uh, we'll get you the latest as it's a big setback for the lobby. Also, the latest on the same-sex marriage debate, which continues in the top court. Thirteen thousand placements last year at Amity. We are committed to nurturing passionate, hardworking, and proactive professionals. Dragging back economic fugitives, fantastic. But a crackdown on corruption alone alone is not enough to steer the economy. That is where the reforms are not just to remove those who are uh, with several cases of corruption and disproportionate assets. This will ensure that at a local level, no officer can go about saying, "Hey, I have come to inspect you," without the system approving it. You come from the northeast, but then the concept of integrated India, Ek Bharat, Shrest Bharat Kar, this concept is very relevant to every state and specifically the northeast. So I think it's the balance and uh, between that, and I think the leadership, along with uh, the flexibility in the constitutional framework that we have, is really what will allow uh, this beautiful nation of ours, which has this complexity, yet, as you said, the nation first approach. Is really what uh, you know uh, is, is a way to move forward in, and so I think uh, there is always a way forward, respecting the different uh, you know communities, respecting the different um, the difference uh, that we have, and yet keeping the nation first is really the way forward that we. आईजी सर्विस जो कि एक बहुत ही क्रांतिकारी सर्विस के तौर पर माना जा रहा है भारत सबसे अधिक तीव्र गति से डिजिटलीकरण करने वाली इकोनॉमी है that at every point any agency whether it is the ed the cbi the acb questions need to be raised on them i personally think that in a democratic country parliament must have full control of the agencies as well why do we make them into what is called a holy cow that nobody can touch them they must be made answerable you may not interfere in a specific investigation but at the end of the day they must be made accountable to parliament As a young man from Ladakh, how do you see the abrogation of 370 and now being united through that step? केवल 370 ही नहीं हटा, एक सक्षम राष्ट्र बनाने के लिए, एक देश को मजबूत करने का जो निर्णय पहले लेना चाहिए था, जो अटके हुए थे 70 सालों से, वो हुआ है, और ये केवल एक ही सरकार का एक ही अचीवमेंट में नहीं गिना जाएगा। आपको आने वाले पीढ़ी जन्म जन्म तक इसको याद � Dear viewers, in a few days we are bringing to you once again the Republic Summit. And this year our theme is fittingly about how this is a time of transformation. Yes, this is a time of transformation for an India that is growing four times faster than the world average. It is a time of transformation for an India whose manufacturing exports grow 40% year on year on the back of COVID while China witnesses a major loss. This is a time of transformation, of opportunity for India that has let go of the dollar hangover and the rupee is closer to being accepted as international currency. And nearly 60% of all digital payments are already UPI based. Isn't this the very moment to come together and think of how we can make the transformation even quicker? So please join me and join all of us at Republic TV as we bring to you the Republic Summit this year on the theme of a time of transformation. See you there.
इस देश में बहुत समय के बाद एक ऐसी सरकार आई है जो सरकार टिकाने के लिए नहीं चल रही देश को सुधारने के लिए सरकार चल रही ये पहला एक बड़ा इवेंट हुआ है जहां पे आप इस पर विस्तृत तौर से डिटेल आप बात करेंगे तो लेटेस्ट एड्रेस ऑल इश्यूज tough is it for a sportsman and or an athlete to get out of this phase and emerge victorious eventually the contest between the ball and a uh, ball and a bat i think whether it's the world cup final or it's any other game i know it's difficult it's difficult to accept that it's another game of cricket but that is how a sportsman needs to think and that is how i prepare the news and brief uh... Caught in UP's Prayagraj has remanded gangster Atik Ahmed's killers to four-day police custody. Remember, this comes after uh, the SIT uh, files an application in the court seeking remand for questioning for all three accused. Four police officials, including uh, the station officer of uh, Shahganj Police Station in UP's Prayagraj, were suspended for negligence while taking gangsters Atik Ahmed and his brother Ashraf for medical checkup on April 15th uh, when they were shot dead. Days after gangster turned politician Atik uh, was killed by three assailants posters of gangster Atik and his brother Ashraf as martyrs were put up in Bead district of Maharashtra the local police has arrested three people and detained a few others who had put up the posters and uh, we slip into a way break a uh, way small break coming up on the other side we'll get you the latest from Sudan As unrest in the country continues, MEA raises concerns over safety of stranded Indian nationals. Thirteen thousand placements last year. At Amity, we are committed to nurturing passionate, hardworking, and proactive professionals. Dragging back economic fugitives, fantastic. But a crackdown on corruption alone alone is not enough to steer the economy. That is where the reforms are not just to remove those who are uh, with several cases of corruption and disproportionate assets. This will ensure that at a local level, no officer can go about saying, "Hey, I've come to inspect you," without the system approving it. सर्विस जो कि एक बहुत ही क्रांतिकारी सर्विस के तौर पर माना जा रहा है भारत सबसे अधिक तीव्र गति से डिजिटलीकरण करने वाली इकोनॉमी है एज ए यंग मैन फ्रॉम लद्दाख how do you see the abrogation of 370 and now being united through that step keval 370 hi nahi hata hmm. ek saksham rashtra banane ke liye ek desh ko mazboot karne ka jo nirnya pehle lena chahiye tha jo atke hue the 70 saalon se wo hua hai aur ye keval ek hi sarkar ka ek hi achievement mein nahi gina jayega aapko aane wale peedhi janam janam tak isko yaad rakhi there is a certain motivated opposition that is trying to wield control over the top court anyone who chooses to misbehave with the supreme court and uh, causes misdemeanor should be taken to task by the court itself i think we just need some judges just needs to get angry with this kind of behavior and take a call on it and take contempt notice uh, on such people things will improve automatically like of the leadership i convey to prime minister modi of india pradhanmantri narendra modi g20 event ke dauran netaon ke sath dvipakshiya baithak karenge world leader
leaders have promised everything to everyone in the so-called Sustainable Development Goal. Not surprisingly, the world and all the G20 countries are vastly off track to deliver. Even India won't deliver everything, but India has improved faster than any other G20 nation from 2015 to 19. India shows that prioritizing achievable, deliverable development matters. Yet the rich world incessantly stress climate change. And yes, climate is a challenge, but one of many. And currently climate policies cost trillions of dollars, yet deliver trivial temperature reductions in a century from now. In a world where we can't do everything, India is uniquely placed to demand the world focus on the most efficient development policies first. Growth, jobs, education, health is at the top of India's priorities, as it is across most of the world. Climate is there too, but nowhere near the top. I will talk about how smart policies can help India and the world achieve amazing progress for little money. Better education, ending tuberculosis, more trade, lower mortality for mothers and infants, higher agricultural production, and better nutrition. Chairing the G20, India can help all of us focus on the smartest solutions for the challenges faced by the global south. I'll challenge popular opinion at India's biggest news event, the Republic Summit, which is by far India's most high-profile event. I'll see you there. You come from the Northeast, but then the concept of integrated India, Ek Bharat, Shreshth Bharat Kar, this concept is very relevant to every state and specifically the Northeast. So I think it's the balance and uh, between that and I think the leadership along with uh, the flexibility in the constitutional framework that we have is really what will allow uh, this beautiful nation of ours which has this complexity yet as you said the nation first approach is really what uh, you know uh, is, is a way to move forward in and so I think uh, there is always a way forward respecting the different uh, you know communities respecting the different um, the difference uh, that we have viewers you're watching live and breaking at 2 p.m. I'm Suesha Samant and a quick reminder for all of you as India's biggest news event is back the third edition of the Republic Summit that will be held in the national capital this month the biggest names the biggest newsmakers the biggest agents of change and transformation in India will be at the Republic Summit once again this year so do stand by for what will be by far India's biggest news event by miles. India's transformation is for us to celebrate together, to take pride in it together. What does this time of transformation mean to you? Do tell us uh, with what you think about uh, what this transformation means to you. Send us your video or via WhatsApp on 7304434381. The most compelling responses will get in-house seats to India's biggest news event, the Republic Summit. So do join us in celebrating this time of transformation. On that note, let's begin with the headlines we're tracking at the sun. It is a big setback for the lobby. Top court sets aside Maoist sympathizer GN Sai Baba's acquittal. Political blockbuster in battleground Karnataka, Kicha Sudeep campaigns for Boma. BJP leader Parveen murdered in Hubli Dharwad. BJP alleges political hand. Historic same-sex marriage debate continues in Supreme Court. Centre files fresh affidavit. Maharashtra Minister Gulab Rao Patil raises eyebrows with Pawar play not over yet. Remark. Unrest continues in Sudan. MEA raises concerns over the safety of stranded Indian nationals.
we're getting you fresh breaking news coming in on the same-sex marriage case uh, where the central government has now written to all the states for their views on legal recognition of same-sex marriage, asking them to give their views in the next 10 days. In fact, the public has been able to access that letter. My colleague will join us uh, from the Mumbai newsroom to give us more details of this letter and what the centre has stated through it. But uh, primarily, early on information that is coming in of how the central government has written to all the states for their views on legal recognition of same-sex marriage, asking them to share their views in the next 10 days. This as a fresh affidavit has been filed by the centre before the Supreme Court as the court is hearing a bunch of petitions on the legality of same-sex marriages. The centre has also asked the Supreme Court to make all states and union territories across the country party to the ongoing proceedings, saying that the present issue falls within the legislative domain of the states and hence the states should be party to the hearing. The centre has in the affidavit argued that all states should be heard before the apex court proceeds further with the hearing in this case. And in the very latest that Republic is just bringing to you, same-sex marriage case as the center, central government has written to all the states on their views on legal recognition of same-sex marriage asking to share their views in the next 10 days uh, coming across to our legal editor rhythm and bhargwaj who's with me on the phone line uh, rhythm give us details of this letter that republic has been able to access all right i believe it's not rhythm but sambhav who's uh, with us on the broadcast sambhav uh, do share details of this letter. Well, uh, the hearing continued today also in the Supreme Court in this regard, wherein the center has filed uh, another affidavit saying that state, uh, uh, they have asked the state, uh, all the state government, they have written a letter to the state governments and waiting for their reply. Now, the state governments uh, uh, have been sought to file, ask, uh, I mean, uh, for their reply on the same sex marriage issue. This is uh, what the Solicitor General Tushar Mehta has also informed in the top court before Chief Justice of India today. Uh, this is very important, Sambhav, because let's also understand that uh, the centre has asked the Supreme Court that uh, states and union territories mu must be made a part of the ongoing proceedings also saying that uh, this falls under the legislative domain of the states. So important now to how the states respond uh, as far as uh, their views uh, on the ongoing proceedings and this uh, concept of same-sex marriages is. Uh, we'll track the story very closely. For the moment, we move on. And uh, shifting focus to the other big story we are tracking for you. This is the latest that is just coming in. Turns out that Ajit Pawar Rao has not ended yet. Maharashtra Minister Gulab Rao Raghunath Patil has now sparked a fresh controversy with uh, making a statement that uh, reads, and I quote, something big can be expected in the next two to three days. That's the remark that he has passed and uh, adding that uh, Pawar wants a way out. This has uh, triggered a whole new storm as far as the Ajit Pawar controversy is concerned because uh, Gulab Rao, Raghunath Patil has said that uh, something big can be expected in the next two to three days also adding that Ajit Pawar wants a way out. Remember Ajit Pawar has made diplomatic statements in the past uh, where uh, there is no uh, official statement on whether he actually uh, is thinking of uh, calling it quits with the MC NCP but uh, this is the latest uh, that is just coming in after Maharashtra Minister Gulab Rao Raghunath Patil has uh, said that something big can be expected in the next two to three days adding that uh, Ajit Pawan wants his way out let's listen into the minister's uh, statement सभी चैनल पर और सभी वृत्तपत्र पर आप देखेंगे तो एक ही यहाँ पर बात दिखाई दे रही है कि अजीत पवार जी अपनी पार्टी छोड़ रहे हैं और मुझे तो भी लगता है कि इतना वातावरण जो महाराष्ट्र में बन रहा है तो उसका मतलब यही होता है कि 
उन्होंने तय कर लिया है कि मुझे पार्टी छोड़ना है ये कोई ज्योतिष को पूछने की जरूरत नहीं है कोई भी आदमी की बात भी पेपर में या टीवी में आती है तो इसका मतलब यही होता है कि कुछ न कुछ चल रहा है गड़बड़ है और मुझे लगता है कि यह गड़बड़ पार्टी को स्थलांतर करने की है पार्टी से निकलने की है और वो होना दो तीन दिन में तय है ऐसा बहुत से लोग बोल रहे हैं पूछे हसन मुस्ते साहब को उनके ऊपर प्रेशर है क्या नहीं आप जाकर पूछे अनिल देशमुख जी को उनके ऊपर प्रेशर है क्या नहीं आप जाकर पूछे जितेंद्र आवाड़ जी को उनके ऊपर प्रेशर है क्या नहीं और कितने नाम चाहिए आपको मुझे बताइए आप जाइए प्रफुल्ल पटेल जी के यहाँ और उनको पूछे कि आपके ऊपर प्रेशर है या नहीं जिस तरह से जांच एजेंसी सेंट्रल प्रेशर बनाकर फिर बीजेपी ऑपरेशन कर रही है उसके ऊपर अगर हमारे जैसे लोग बोलते हैं तो जरूर बीजेपी को गुस्सा होना चाहिए और किसी को गुस्सा होने की जरूरत नहीं है ये क्या किसी किसी पार्टी के बारे में मैंने कहा कि महाराष्ट्र में अपोजिशन को तोड़ने की कोशिश हो रही है ये सच है या झूठ है ये अजीत दादा ने बताना चाहिए Coming across to Alicia, who is now joining us live on the broadcast. Alicia, clearly there is too much speculation on what Ajit Pawar uh, will do next, and uh, with the, these kind of remarks coming in from the ministers, uh, uh, what really is one to expect? Can we uh, actually think of a game changer in the next two to three days? Alicia, that is something I have been given a hint by a Maharashtra minister, Dilip Rao Patel. Even yesterday, when Ajit Pawar has uh, uh, come over to show the media and clearly mentioned that there is no risk uh, within the NCP, but now here is the Maharashtra cabinet minister, Dilip Rao Patel, who is clearly mentioning that the atmosphere which is building up in Maharashtra is very much clear. That Ajit Pawar has decided that he is leaving the party. Something is picking up. Something is wrong. And uh, many people are saying it will happen in the next two to three days. Not only this, but Dilabra Patel also mentioned that Sharad Pawar is a senior and a big leader. Whatever he says uh, and whatever he comes to media is always uh, something awful as that always happens. And uh, also mentioned over the MLAs that is being meeting Ajit Pawar. If uh, there is nothing wrong, is what uh, Dilabra Patel has mentioned. But what is to point out is uh, uh, Dilabra Patel has said uh, something will surely happen in next two to three days. So this is what has been mentioned out of by Dilapra Patel. As we know that yesterday there were a series of meetings that happened in Vidhan Bhavan where the several entity MLAs have come to meet Ajit Pawar and clearly even mentioned that they will give their all support to Ajit Pawar. So that the past Ajit Pawar who comes forward and said that there is no risk of the building and he is going to stay in the end part. Alicia, not too sure if you can hear me, but uh, continue talking to us uh, as far as uh, Ajit Pawar's bigger plan is concerned, uh, because we understand how uh, all these statements are really adding fuel to the fire. But uh, uh, what exactly is uh, being discussed uh, 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 as far as uh, Ajit Pawar uh, uh, on the inside of the NCP is concerned, and uh, even how the other parties are looking at it? Alicia, can you hear me? Um, yes, Alicia. As uh, we have been quoting about uh, the statement that has been given by Blabla Patel, and uh, also he said that it is not something a one-day match; it will go on for days. But uh, let me tell you this: as Kavar has yesterday has made it very clear that uh, he is not going to leave the party. He is with the NCP. Uh, but uh, several statements that have been coming because this all starts in the form eight of April. When Ajit Pawar was to attend a meeting uh, uh, in Pune, but uh, uh, he left all his convoy behind, all the police security behind, and went in a private car for a meeting. We are not really very sure about uh, whom did he uh, whom did he meet, but as for the reports, he met some senior leaders uh, uh, in the central uh, uh, central government. Is uh, what we have been told. Not to confirm it, but yes. But then not only after there are the speculation over the. And uh, of Ajit Pawar and uh, his support, uh, supporter MLAs who are being even continuously meeting, and uh, uh, we have to wait. Uh,
All right, Republic is tracking the situation on the ground very, very closely. Alicia, they're getting us details. Uh, but uh, a youth stir after this remark by Maharashtra Minister Gulab Rao Raghunath Patil, who has gone on to say that something big is expected in the next two to three days. He's also added that Pawar is on his way out. And uh, what really happens uh, is something Republic is tracking very closely. For the moment, a quick update uh, on the election stories we are tracking. And well, ahead of the Karnataka Assembly polls slated for the 10th of May, the Karnataka Chief Minister Basavaraj Bomma is all set to file his uh, nomination, which he did from Shigaon today. position to comment on the political aspect of it. I am here to support father in his constituency because he has a bigger responsibility of uh, going through the state. So my responsibility is uh, his constituency. Kannar actor Kicha Sudeep met uh, BJP National President JP Nadda. BJP State President Nalit Kumar Katil and other party leaders at the Hubli Airport. The actor also accompanied BJP Party President at his roadshow in Shigao. JP Nadda held a mega roadshow in Shigao after he paid a visit to Sri Siddharpurasura Mat at Dharwar district. JP Nadda also visited. visited the Siddha Ruda Mutt to seek support and blessings from prominent Lingayat seers in Hubli. Former Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Yerurappa's son B.Y. Vijendra offered prayers ahead of filing nomination from the Shikari Pura Assembly constituency. Today he said that he was happy that BJP had given him a chance to contest his first election from the same constituency from where his father had contested. Shikaripur constituency Bharatiya Janta Party ka gad hai. Pichle 40 saal se Edurappa ji ko lagatar aashirwad, lagatar aashirwad de rahe. Mujhe kushi hai is baat ki constituency jaha Edurappa ji lad rahe te pichle 40 saal se. BJP released a list of star campaigners of 40 leaders for the Karnataka Assembly polls stated on the 10th of May. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, uh, BJP National President JP Nadda, U UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, BS Yerurappa, Basavaraj Pomai, Prahla Joshi and many others who have made it to this star-studded list. Congress leader Jagdish Shetar, who quit the party after being denied a ticket, filed his nomination from Hubli Dharwar Central Assembly constituency. He will face BJP candidate Mahesh Teginka in the election. After Lakshman Savari and Jagdish Shetar, a new name that uh, has been added to the list as Ayanur Manjunath is all set to quit the party. He will resign as MLC and from the primary membership of BJP, he will be submitting his resignation to the Speaker of the Council, Pasavaraj Farati. Ahead of filing his submitting and submitting his nomination papers as the Congress candidate for the upcoming Karnataka elections, Congress leader Siddharamaya held a mega rally in Varuna. An independent candidate, Young Kappa, paid his deposit money of uh, 10,000 rupees entirely in one rupee coins while filing his nomination from Yadgir constituency in Karnataka. He collected the coins from people across the constituency to contest the Karnataka elections on the 10th of May. AIDMK to contest in the upcoming Karnataka election, uh, where AIDMK General Secretary Edapari K. Palani Sami announced D. Anbarasan as the candidate from Pulikeshi Nagar constituency.
And we cut across to more breaking news coming in as according to sources in the centre. Amid the ongoing violence in Sudan, India is now coordinating very closely with various countries to ensure safety and security of Indian nationals in violence hit Sudan. Cutting across to senior executive editor Abhishek Kapoor who's with us on the phone line. Abhishek, uh, what are the measures that India is taking to ensure the safety of Indians uh, on the ground in Sudan? Well, Suresha, for one, uh, our uh, mission there is in touch with uh, most of the Indian uh, community uh, members present there in Sudan or any parts of uh, uh, Sudan, including uh, capital Khartoum and other important cities. Uh, and uh, every Indian citizen through general advisory uh, has been asked to uh, take care of themselves and not venture out uh, because uh, violence is happening. It's almost like a civil war situation, though, of course, it's... Uh, fight happening between two generals, one leading the official army, the another leading the official paramilitary force, the RSF, and, uh, 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 and but then this is, a, uh, this is an unstable situation there and uh, the, apart from the advisory, India is coordinating with other, other nations uh, who have their cities and stuck there or who have people from uh, their region there in the uh, in, in, in the troubled torn country. Uh, we have seen pictures coming out to Asia yesterday of uh, UN uh, uh, staff being uh, attacked or the UN facilities uh, being targeted by uh, these uh, warring factions, uh, warring troops uh, of uh, uh, of the army and uh, para paramilitary force RSF and uh, uh, it's been about five days, almost 300 people have lost their lives, uh, uh, bombings and air bombings and uh, gunfights are happening, uh, street battles are happening, so obviously situation is tense. Uh, uh, we have seen an element of politicking back home with uh, uh, Congress's uh, uh, Siddha Ramaya, uh, take you know, trying to politicize the issue of uh, some people from Karnataka stuck uh, in Sudan. Uh, but And then we have seen a sharp rebuttal coming in from the external affairs minister. But uh, apart from that, India is coordinating with other nations who have their citizens stuck because uh, there was a ceasefire that was uh, agreed to between the two warring sides yesterday, but it was not effective on the ground because if the ceasefire is effective, then you can uh, at least have uh, peace around the Khartoum airport and evacuate uh, all those people you want to, including your own citizens. Uh, uh, but that situation has not happened because uh, the ceasefire was ineffective. Uh, we have seen pictures of the airport also targeted with the uh, with the, uh, civilian uh, airlines uh, of uh, other countries uh, and their aircraft bombed. Uh, of course, they were parked and no one was there inside. Uh, but that's huge damage that's happening. Uh, and uh, the, the picture that's emerging from Sudan, which otherwise also has been uh, seen uh, has has seen uh, a long years, decades, in fact, almost of uh, uh, strife, civil strife, leading to the uh, bifurcation of the country into uh, Muslim North and uh, the Christian South, which is now called South Sudan. So, obviously, uh, these are very difficult times, and uh, and, uh, and and India is keeping clo keeping close watch. Our agencies are, in fact, uh, closely tracking the developments, and uh, we are trying that uh, so as soon as. Uh, peace uh, prevails or a ceasefire or a semblance of ceasefire is there, we can evacuate some of the people uh, in need of immediate evacuation. Apart from that, of course, as I said, there have been general advisories and the mission is in touch with most Indian citizens who are uh, who happen to be in Sudan in this difficult time. Uh, exactly uh, uh, what I wanted to ask you next, Abhishek, uh, details on the evacuation process and what exactly is being done in that direction because... Uh, um, uh, the international airport in Sudan is shut and uh, is the Indian government also working out uh, other means and ways uh, as far as evacuation is concerned? is incumbent upon some semblance of ceasefire and consequent peace prevailing because in the present circumstance uh, when even the airport is not safe and then and the, the parked aircrafts are getting bombed uh, and uh, jousting is happening between the two sides to capture as much of public infrastructure as possible we have seen the presidential palace for example getting attacked uh, any evacuation will have to wait till the time that uh, these international remember even the UN facilities have seen uh, uh, targeted attacks uh, uh, by these uh, warring factions. Uh, we don't know whether this was done by the RSF or the military forces just so that they could capture maximum infrastructure. So, till the time that, that, that there is a semblance of truce and at least uh, a communication established with both the sides to make them understand that 
uh, irrespective of whatever they were fighting for, they have to let uh, international agencies work or at least evacuate uh, those people who don't want to be there uh, and get targeted. Uh, work is happening in tandem, and that's the statement coming in from the MEA also, that work is happening in tandem with the uh, other nations uh, who have their citizens also stuck in uh, uh, Sudan so that uh, uh, through this communication channel it can be impressed upon the two sides that please uh, hold on to the ceasefire till the time that we get our people out and then uh, you, you do whatever you want to do. So it's a work in progress until that time uh, ME has advised all Indian citizens to take care of themselves in the best manner possible and not venture out on the streets because that's where the real fighting is happening. Absolutely. Abhishek, uh, we are tracking the situation on the ground very, very closely uh, and also trying to get in touch with some of the Indians uh, to get a sense of what really is it like for them for the moment. Uh, thank you for joining us. We shift our focus. And well, a parking garage collapsed on Tuesday in Lower Manhattan's financial district, killing one worker, injuring five and crushing cars as concrete floors fell on the top of each other. Uh, we are getting you all the details in this report. A loud sound was heard in Lower Manhattan's financial district as a parking garage collapsed. Huge blocks of concrete fell atop of cars parked near a three-storey building. Watch how people in the locality ran helter-skelter to save their lives from the falling building. The incident has claimed one life while leaving five others injured. A garage employee was rescued by a neighbouring roof after being trapped on an upper floor. Authorities believe that they had accounted for everyone inside the building, but searches continue to ensure everyone's safety. Agency report for Republic TV. Coming into a short commercial break, on the other side, the big stories that we are tracking for you this afternoon, BJP leader Praveen has been murdered in Hubli Dharwar. BJP is alleging political hand. Also, it's a big setback for the lobby as top court has set aside Maoist sympathizer GN Sai Baba's acquittal. इस देश में बहुत समय के बाद एक ऐसी सरकार आई है जो सरकार टिकाने के लिए नहीं चल रही देश को सुधारने के लिए सरकार चल रही है ये पहला एक बड़ा इवेंट हुआ है जहां पे आप इस पर विस्तृत तौर से डिटेल आप बात करेंगे तो लेट अस एड्रेस ऑल इश्यूज द टर्न ऑफ द लीडरशिप आई कन्फाइड टू प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी ऑफ इंडिया प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ट्वेंटी इवेंट के दौरान नेताओं के साथ द्विपक्षीय बैठक करेंगे हाउ टफ इज इट फॉर अ स्पोर्ट्समैन एंड और एन एथलीट टू गेट आउट ऑफ दिस फेज एंड इमर्ज विक्टोरियस इवेंचुअली contest between the ball and a uh, ball and a bat i think whether it's the world cup final or it's any other game i know it's difficult it's difficult to accept that it's another game of cricket but that is how a sportsman needs to think and that is how i prepared myself because ultimately whether it's the world cup final or it's the first game of the world cup the contest is not the world cup final the contest is the between the bowler and a batsman so ultimately i have to beat the next ball which i end up playing and i got to do the best of my whatever i could of the next particular delivery so that is how i approach both the world cup finals rather than thinking about the platform rather than thinking about the occasion it is about just watching the ball and reacting to it
World leaders have promised everything to everyone in the so-called Sustainable Development Goal. Not surprisingly, the world and all the G20 countries are vastly off track to deliver. Even India won't deliver everything, but India has improved faster than any other G20 nation from 2015 to 19. India shows that prioritizing achievable, deliverable development matters. Yet the rich world incessantly stress climate change. And yes, climate is a challenge, but one of many. And currently, climate policies cost trillions of dollars, yet deliver trivial temperature reductions in a century from now. In a world where we can't do everything, India is uniquely placed to demand the world focus on the most efficient development policies first. Growth, jobs, education, health is at the top of India's priorities, as it is across most of the world. Climate is there too, but nowhere near the top. I will talk about how smart policies can help India and the world achieve amazing progress for little money. Better education, ending tuberculosis, more trade, lower mortality for mothers and infants, higher agricultural production, and better nutrition. Chairing the G20, India can help all of us focus on the smartest solutions for the challenges faced by the global south. I'll challenge popular opinion at India's biggest news event, the Republic Summit, which is by far India's most high-profile event. I'll see you there. Dragging back economic fugitives, fantastic. But a crackdown on corruption alone, alone is not enough to steer the economy. That is where the reforms are not just to remove those who are uh, with several cases of corruption and disproportionate assets. This will ensure 